Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to First Methodist here in Zephyr Hills. I love seeing all of you here this morning to celebrate our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I know we've got many that have joined us online and we're glad that you're part of this worship celebration as well. Uh, I want to point out just some of the beauty that we have up here. The altar flowers in particular are offered this morning in memory of Patty Meese from Marie Meese, Alice Perry, and Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Perry and children. And we're grateful for their offering uh, for our service this morning. For those of you that bought Easter lilies to help decorate the sanctuary, you are welcome to take them home at the end of the service. Uh, when everything is finished here, uh, just grab them, take them home, plant them, and you have something of beauty year-round. And we appreciate you and uh, what you were doing here. To keep up to date on what's going on in our church, if you want to find out about the many ministries that we have for fellowship, for spiritual growth, serving our community, uh, we encourage you to visit our website. We also encourage you to follow us on Facebook. And if you're not on our email list, be sure to contact the church office and sign up for those updates on what's happening here uh, at First United Methodist of Zephyr Hills. We do have the, the printed worship programs every Sunday, but there's limited space in those. So to get a fuller picture, you either have to wait for the monthly newsletters or the website or the weekly e-blast so you can see uh, what's going on in the life of our church here. We, we had something special for you this morning. We had a brass trio that was scheduled to play. Uh, some friends from our, our brother Conway from uh, Pasco High School. Unfortunately, due to sickness and a car accident, they're not here this morning. Going to be okay. Everyone's fine. Uh, we don't have them here this morning, but who we do have back in the saddle who's been out for a week is our regular organist, George Root. And George, we love you, brother, and we're glad to have you back. <laughs> He's feeling much better, and uh, he sent a card to just share briefly that uh, wanted to say thank you to all of you who had visited, who had prayed for him, and uh, we, we'd miss this Sunday without him, so we're glad that he's back and helping us to worship together. This morning, we're finishing our worship series that's called Between the Gardens. If you weren't here the last two Sundays and you want to catch up, see what we did last Sunday and the Sunday before that, you can go to our church's YouTube channel. We have our own channel set up, and you just have to go to YouTube and search for, it sounds complicated, but it's not, F-U-M-C-Z Hills, right? F-U-M, First United Methodist Church, Z Hills, F-U-M-C-Z Hills, live stream and you'll find our channel and you can always go back uh, months at a time and and pick up the worship services and sermons uh, that you may have missed if you want to we just want to make that available to you and remind you of that but with that we've come to worship the lord together so i invite you to stand as you're able let's all stand together those of you online as well join us in our call to worship good morning and for those of you that are worshiping online good morning to you as well our call to worship is responsive, so I will lead and you will respond. It's on the wall behind me. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God is our strength and our might. God has become our salvation. This day, God has acted. Our opening hymn is Christ the Lord is Risen Today, hymnal, page 302, and on the wall behind me, we're going to sing all the verses. Verses 1, 2, 3, and 4.
going to affirm our faith at this time. It is done in unison and it's on the wall behind me. We believe and know that Jesus is the Holy One of God. We believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. We believe that he is in the Father and the Father is in him. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, we have life in his name. Amen. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. We worship and we adore you, God, for the wonder of your power. You created all that is, and when we rejected your life within us, you came to renew and restore us. We confess to you, God, and before one another that we have sinned. We have failed to look to you for hope. We have been overwhelmed by all the negative all around us. Without the hope that is grounded in you, we've got nothing to share with the world. So forgive us and renew in us the good news of Easter, that we may find our hope renewed and share it with the world. We give you thanks for all the ways you express your love for us. We thank you for the beauty of the world and the joy of sharing love with one another. We thank you for hope in lives that have found new joy and have found fulfillment in your grace. We pray for one another in our need, and if we pray for all people anywhere who have lost hope. As you move among your children bringing new life, grant that we may be your joyful people sharing the good news of hope that is grounded in you. All this we ask in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
What can you give a God who has loved you so much? Well, we give him our worship. Sunday after Sunday, we gather into this place and we sing. Uh, we listen to the scriptures and to the message. We pray. We give. We greet each other. Many ways that we tell God that we love him in return. One of those ways is with the giving of our tithes and of our offerings. For those of you that call this church your home, it's a chance for you to give back a portion of what the Lord has given you. If you're a guest with us today, welcome. We don't want you to feel any obligation to give. We happily receive any offerings that you have, uh, but this is a time for our church family to give generously and joyfully to the Lord to ensure the work of ministry continues. So let's go to the Lord in prayer again, shall we? Heavenly Father, you are the great provider. We thank you for the very lives that we have. And for what you've given us to not only live these lives, but to enjoy them. Lord, we pray that you would receive these gifts, these tithes, and the offerings above and beyond that, and use them for your purposes. Continue to lead and guide your church here. Help us to increase in our faithfulness and our diligence to be about the mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ. And may we do so with great joy in his name. Amen.
remain standing as we sing our next hymn, number 322, Up From the Grave He Arose, verses 1, 2, and 3. especially today, Easter Sunday, we humble our hearts in praise and in thanksgiving. Our scripture today is Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. I am reading from the NIV version, and it's the same version that you have in your pew. Matthew 28, 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary at Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here, for he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, 
he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. That is where they will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. All right, at this time, if we have children that would like to go to Children's Church in preparation for our Easter egg hunt after the service, uh, you can head down to the front corner here. We have a number of children who are already in the nursery, so even if we only have a small handful here, uh, you're not going to be alone. We've got other children that are going to join you. They just happen to already be in the nursery, the younger ones. Uh, the majority of our children, uh, their parents, guardians, grandparents are at the 930 service. We have a, a big crowd of children. Uh, enjoying an Easter egg hunt after the 930 service, but we always want to make that opportunity available at both services. Uh, we're going to be as family friendly as we can, as long as we can, and this is something that's going to be a lot of fun this morning. So if you want to go with Miss Karen and join the other children that are already over there, they're going to immediately be taken over uh, to the children's ministry room and then at the end of the service go right out in preparation for the Easter egg hunt. So parents, guardians, you don't pick them up in the classroom this time. You can go straight to the courtyard where the Easter egg hunt is. And many of you may not know where the courtyard is or that we even have one. So what you do is you go out this door there and just go up across the alley past uh, Cooper Hall. Cooper Hall is actually part of a U. We've got Cooper Hall, and then on the other side is our chapel and education building. And there's a really beautiful fenced-in courtyard over there. And that's where the Easter egg hunt's going to be. So you can get to it from the outside, or you can go through Cooper Hall and access it from the inside uh, and just enjoy uh, the exuberance of the children as they celebrate Easter on this day. Well, welcome to Life Between the Gardens, right? That's where we've been. Two weeks ago, we uh, began this worship series at the Garden of Eden, where human history began. The Garden of Eden is where humanity failed. It's where sin and death entered into our existence. We continued last Sunday to the Garden of Gethsemane. It's the garden where Jesus wrestled to accept his mission of suffering and dying for our sins. The Garden of Gethsemane is where Jesus, by his obedience to the Father's will, is where he brought righteousness and life to all who would trust in him. Today, Easter Sunday, our story continues in a garden, the garden tomb. John chapter 19. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Now, let me give you the quick backstory here. Many of you know the details of this. After Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, we have Judas and the chief priests and the elders and the officers of the temple guard coming to arrest him. They arrested Jesus. They tried him without justice in the middle of the night, and they sentenced him to death. And they gave him a method of execution that was designed to be deliberately slow and painful. They ridiculed him. They battered him. And they tortured him. And then they nailed him to a tree. And put him on public display where people walking by would see him. Naked and exposed. He died at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday dying much quicker than most victims of crucifixion died. Now, normally, the corpse of a crucified criminal would be left for the vultures. But there was a prominent Jewish leader. His name was Joseph. He was from Arimathea. And he asked Pilate for permission to bury the body of Jesus. Joseph was like another prominent Jewish leader of the day whose name was Nicodemus. And they, they had taken a special interest in Jesus. So the two of them... Joseph and Nicodemus, they, they took Jesus' body a short distance to a tomb in a garden. And it was a new tomb in a garden near where Jesus was crucified. Joseph owned the tomb. It had been cut into the rock in preparation for his own family's use. It wasn't uncommon for the wealthy in that day to prepare such a tomb in advance because of the difficulty of digging graves in the rocky ground around Jerusalem. So there it was, a new and unused garden tomb. And that's where Joseph and Nicodemus took the body of Jesus. They did so just in time because the Jewish Sabbath was about to begin. And when the Sabbath began, they would have been forbidden to carry anything, uh, let alone a corpse. Since it was almost sunset, 
they didn't have time to give the corpse the full burial treatment. So they simply wrapped Jesus' body in strips of linen with a large quantity of fragrant spices just to counter the smell of decomposition, and they put him in the garden tomb. So from the Garden of Eden to the Garden of Gethsemane to the garden tomb. Now, if this were the end of the story, it would just be another epic story from antiquity. It would be just another story from antiquity that high schoolers are forced to read, like the Iliad, or Beowulf, or the Epic of Gilgamesh. But that's not the end of the story. That's not why Jesus is famous. The pyramids of Egypt are famous because they contain the mummified bodies of ancient Egyptian kings. Westminster Abbey in London is famous because of the bodies of English nobles and notables that rest in it. Mohammed's tomb is famous for the stone coffin and the bones which it contains. Arlington National Cemetery, Washington, D.C., famous because it's the honored resting place of many outstanding Americans. But there is all the difference in the world between the garden tomb of Jesus Christ and these other places. They are famous. They attract visitors from all over the world because of what they contain. The garden tomb of Jesus is famous because of what it does not contain. About 30 years ago, in a faraway kingdom called Indiana, where I am from. <laughs> it's a true story. There, there was a letter sent to a deceased person by the Indiana Department of Social Services. This is what it said. Your food stamps will be stopped effective March 1992 because we received notice that you passed away. You may reapply if there is a change in your circumstances. <laughs> true story. Indiana, right? <laughs> Well, we're here this morning because there was a change in circumstances for Jesus. Amen? An absolute change in circumstances. He was deceased. He was buried in a garden tomb for a couple days. And then his circumstances changed. He was raised from the dead by the power of God. The same power of God that can change our circumstances if we will believe in him and trust in him. The resurrection of Jesus Christ enables us to go from the Garden of Eden to the Garden of Gethsemane to the Garden Tomb all the way to another garden, to the heavenly city that John describes in Revelation chapter 21 and 22, the end of the book. The beginning of the book, we have Eden. This was the Garden of Disobedience and Sin. And then there... In the middle, we've got Gethsemane, where the, gardens, uh, the garden of obedience and submission was, where Jesus submitted. And then we learn at the end of the book that heaven will be an eternal garden of delight and satisfaction to the glory of God. Because in that garden, there will be no more sin, no more curse, no more death. The river of the water of life will flow ceaselessly. That's what it says. And the tree of life will produce bountiful fruit. Revelation chapter 22. End of the book, but not the end of the story. This is the garden where God reigns. It's a return to paradise. In a sense, our heavenly lives is a return to Eden. It's from garden to garden to garden. Let me give you a glimpse of how the Apostle John describes this garden at the end of time. Revelation chapter 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of that city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse, the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Can you hear how this description of paradise 
links back to the description of the paradise that was the Garden of Eden. Do you hear the commonalities? We have this image of the, the river of a water of life. It says here in, in Revelation 22, the river of the water of life. We'll go all the way back to Genesis, the very beginning. Genesis 2.10 says there was a river in the Garden of Eden. Here in Revelation 22, we have this image of the tree of life. Go back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 3 refers to the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. It was represented as, as perpetuating physical life forever. Now it says Adam and Eve were forbidden to eat of the fruit of this tree after they had sinned. But someday we will eat of the fruit of this tree once again. We will have life forever if we trust in Jesus and in what he has done. In the garden in the future where God reigns, no longer will there be any curse. The Bible describes it here as a, as a new Jerusalem as a new and a, and a permanent Eden. It, it can't be relinquished or given up because there's no longer any curse. And that just as Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, as they walked alongside the Lord there with no hindrances and with no barriers, so it will be again someday. Side by side, hand in hand with our Lord. The river of God that John writes about here in Revelation, it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit flows among the angelic powers in heaven. The Bible says that this river now flows within the church. This church, every faithful, authentic Christian church, the river of life flows through it. We see this in the sacrament of holy baptism. In baptism, we see this imagery of, of the Holy Spirit who makes clean those who are washed. Those who are washed by the waters of baptism, that representing the reception of the Holy Spirit in their lives, they're, they're washed more clean, it says, than snow, more clean than crystal. Using the, the image and the, uh, the language of Revelation here, this river of God filled up with water representing the Holy Spirit, it flows through the Jerusalem above, flowing from God the Father through the Son. It's a river of life the water of life because it is the power of God himself the creator and redeemer and sustainer of our lives into the book revelation 22 verse 17 the spirit and the bride say come and let the one who hears say come let the one who is thirsty come and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life so from the Garden of Eden, where humanity failed, to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed, to the Garden where God reigns forever. Does this sound appealing to you? Yes, it does. In fact, I believe that's why most of you are here today. Those of you who come so faithfully week after week, because you know the appeal. My guess is even for those who might be new here today, Maybe you're just checking us out. You're checking out this message or maybe you're visiting someone and they wanted to go to church on Easter and, and they brought you here. It was no accident. The Lord brought you here today. Yeah, it may have been your Ford or Toyota, but the Lord brought you here today. <laughs> because you need to be reminded of this message. Do you know that you need God in your life? Are you, are you thirsty for the water of life as it says in here? Most of you are. You're thirsty for, for something that will add to your life and not detract from your life. Do you know that Jesus, who is God's salvation, that he died on the cross for you? Yeah, you've heard, you've heard the story. You know Jesus died on the cross for all of us. No, do you know that he died for you? You. He did. He loves you that much. He died so that you wouldn't have to die. And here on Easter Sunday is a perfect time for you to change the direction of your life if you need to. Just change it. Turn around. You may thought that there was no hope. You may thought that you, the choices you had made, the decisions you've made have, have locked you into a pathway that you just can't get out of. It's not true. You can change the direction of your life right here this morning. You can turn to the God who loves you. And that's a choice that you make. You've got free will. You've got the freedom to choose. You can choose God or you can choose not God. You can choose God. 
Ask him to forgive you of your sins and, and choose to turn from, from the path that leads to death and destruction of sinful and selfish ways and turn to God. Receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. You see, being a Christian, being a follower of Jesus, what mean being a Christian is, it's, it's not just about believing in, in some creed or a set of beliefs. It's not even about even going to church on Easter Sunday. It's part of what we do. But being a Christian is having Jesus himself take up residence in your life, in your heart. Do you invite him in? Acknowledge him as your Savior and invite him in to be your Lord, to be your, to be your leader. And if you'd like to do that this morning, if you'd like to have Jesus in your life, if you're ready to turn it around, start in a new direction, you can. I want you to pray with me. Everyone, let's pray together. In fact, for all of us, I think this would be a good thing. Just to take a moment, let's close our eyes and, and bow our heads. We just do that to kind of block out distractions, the sights around us, the sound of the AC kicking in or whatever it is. We, we want to focus on the words. That's why we close our eyes. That's why we bow our heads. It's, it's to focus. And so I'm going to give us just a moment of silence to still our, the thoughts in our minds. And then I'm going to invite all of us to repeat after me, line for line. I think it'll be a good reminder for us who are already followers of Jesus Christ. It'll be for all of us. Let's just take a moment of silence to be still. And now all of us aloud repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I believe you died for my sins and rose again from the dead. Right now, I turn from my sins and open the door of my heart and life. I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. Amen. And that's how you turn your life around. That's how you leave from this place a new person, born again, so that you can start pursuing those things that add joy and peace and love to your life. You're going to leave this place and go back out into the world, which is becoming such a negative place. All of the, the media, what you read, what you hear, all the, the social media and all the, the competition and all the, the ways they challenge us to measure up. Listen, it's, it's demoralizing. It's degrading. It sucks the life out of you. You don't have to live that way anymore. You can make the choice to follow Jesus and hang out with his people. Not a perfect people, but a people who know there's a better way to live in this world. Now, there's no magic in those words we just prayed together. No magic in any of this. What there is, though, when there's sincerity and when there's a desire in your heart to believe what you just said, God honors that. And he has already set you on a new path, a new direction in following Jesus. You may feel it, you may not feel it, doesn't make it untrue. And if that's you this morning, I want you to do something for me. I want you to not hide it, not ignore it, but I want you to share it. I want you to tell others. I want you to tell me after the service or tell any of our worship leaders because the Christian life was not meant to be lived alone. This isn't just something that we do uh, once or twice a year, uh, just a kind of reminder. It, it's a way of life in this world that requires, for the sake of our own joy and peace, and, and love requires community, the Christian community. So whether it's here in Zephyr Hills or wherever your community is, if you're just uh, visiting from out of town, you're online, let us know. Let me know. Shoot me an email or call me, and I'll help you get connected to the Christian community because that's going to help you as you get out and live a new life. Let's stand together and sing our closing hymn.
Amen. Christ is risen. If you are a guest with us today, welcome to First Methodist of Zephyr Hills. If it's your very first Sunday with us, we have a gift for you, a small gift bag, just our way of saying thanks for being here. You can uh, go out in the back in the, uh, the lobby, the narthex there. The ushers will get you a gift bag. We just want you to know that we appreciate you and uh, hope that you'll come back. Uh, we hope that you'll uh, come back next week, all of you, because we're going to start a new worship series. Because of Easter this Sunday, we're going to go back to square one next Sunday. We're going to spend the next four weeks looking at some of the very, very basics of our faith. Four-week worship series called Back to Square One would be a great opportunity for you to invite your friends and family that don't have a church home. They're going to hear just the absolute essentials of who we are and what we believe and why we believe. It's a way that can really make a difference in how we live in the world today. So come back next Sunday for that. And for parents, guardians, grandparents, again, uh, you can either go through Cooper Hall and uh, get ready to, to watch maybe part of the Easter egg hunt there, or you can head out this way to the street, just go across the alley, go to the courtyard there on the right. We're going to have a, a good time uh, with Easter eggs this morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And now may the God of peace, who brought back again from the dead our Lord Jesus, equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, all that is pleasing to him. And to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen.